اللهم مرات امورنا واعذنا من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا. Let's start off with a recitation from the Holy Quran. Allah. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. وأخرى تحبونها لكم من الله وفتح قريب وبشر المؤمنين. يا أيها الذين آمنوا كونوا أنصار الله أنصار الله كما قال عيسى بن مريم للحواريين حواريين من أنصاري إلى الله قال الحواريون نحن أنصار الله فآمن الطائفة من بني إسرائيل من بني إسرائيل وكفر الطائفة فأيدنا الذين آمنوا على عدوهم فأصبحوا ظاهرين صدق الله العظيم Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh again everybody. Welcome to one of first of its kind Asla online fundraiser for the Ravenhall Masjid. Alhamdulillah, the Ravenhall Masjid is in its final stages of development. But we need your assistance as a community to complete this project. And what better time to do this than the holy month of Ramadan, where our rewards are multiplied many fold. Alhamdulillah, this project could, have, could not have come this far without the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and by the generous patrons of our community, alhamdulillah. Over the years, so many individuals have come forward to donate in the hope of attaining invaluable reward and have donated large sums of money to this project, alhamdulillah. Just today, Allahu Akbar, one sister donated her gold ring towards this cause, Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward her, her family, and all that have donated so far. We encourage all of you to donate and contribute towards this worthy cause. To donate, you can actually use the link that appears on your screen, inshallah. Please dig, please dig deep, give generously the aim so that Allah, so that inshallah, the patrons will be able to use the wonderful Raven Hall Masjid, inshallah, by next Ramadan. To exemplify these points, Alhamdulillah, tonight we have the honor of being joined by Sheikh Noor Hamid Muhammad Arkad. And well, through the Quran, Salah, and Salafah. Sheikh Noor Hamid has been a role model to the youth in the community by guiding them in spiritual and worldly affairs. It's been the forefront of building a healthy and productive younger generation to the detriment of the community, alhamdulillah. Sheikh Nur Amit, alhamdulillah, is the Hafiz of the Holy Quran, who completed his bachelor's degree in Islamic studies at Islamia College in Cape Town in South Africa, and went on to complete his master's in Islamic studies at the University of Western Cape. Without further ado, inshallah, I would like to pass on to Sheikh Nur Hamid to share his words of wisdom with us, inshallah. Jazakumullah khair, uh, Hafiz Azam, and for all the committee for arranging this and making this possible. So may Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all our efforts and make this uh, a success for us in this world and hereafter, inshallah. A'udhu billahi sameel alim min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد 
فقد قال الله تعالى في كلامه العزيز بعد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا ايها الذين امنوا انفقوا مما رزقناكم من قبل ان ياتي يوم لا بيع فيه ولا خله ولا شفاعه والكافرون هم الظالمون صدق الله العلي All praise and glory be to Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, creator, nourisher, sustainer, provider and protector and control of every single thing exist. Peace and salutation be upon our beloved master Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, upon his family members, companions, upon every single Muslim brothers and sisters who followed and who is following and will follow the sunnah of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and all those who are connected with this virtual program. Although we are not physically connected to one another we are not in one gathering but as long as our minds and hearts are connected here inshallah because we have no other option angels are with us and they are making dua for us and they are saying ameen and they are sending blessings upon us so may almighty allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept this virtual gathering my dear respected brothers and elders in islam we have reached many Ramadan in our life and we have experienced many Ramadan in our life and this year Ramadan has been really unique and this year Ramadan we can really feel how important is the social gathering and interaction and each and every one of us we are really missing it we are really missing and we are crying other day a brother called me and said Sheikh when are the masjids going to be open can the masjid be open for last 10 nights? Can we gather on the odd night in the masjid? Will the Waqaf board allow us to gather? My respected brothers and sisters in Islam, when we miss, when a ni'mah of Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is taken away, then only we realize, then only we realize how important is those ni'mah. My respected brothers, amongst us we have many huffaz. Many Hufaz do are there. Those who teach Quran, Alhamdulillah, in last few years, in this century, the number of Hufaz and those who are teaching Quran have increased all over the world. We do not have a value for it. If you go back in the history, if you go back in the history in Russia and other part of the world, even in Cape Town, there was a time where Quran, teaching Quran was banned. People used to hide and people used to go behind people, those who know, those who only know from by heart, they could teach the Quran because having a mushaf was banned. My respected brothers, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forbid, may Allah protect us from a such condition, but we can really feel due to this COVID-19 that we are unable to gather in a masjid. And what is the objective of Ramadan? Many Ramadan has come and gone. Why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us this month of Ramadan and what do Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promise to this month of Ramadan? If you look at it, all the ahadith and if you go through the Quranic verses which is mentioned about Ramadan and about Quran, it is always that Allah wishes, Allah hope and He wants us to purify ourselves through the ibadah. He intend that each and every one of us will engage with His kalam with Kalamullah, we will engage with Quran and we will purify our hearts, we will purify our behavior, we will purify our life and we will rectify and turn towards Him. And this month is given, the promise you say it is Rahmah, Maghfirah, Itqum min nar We cannot be free from the hellfire unless we are being purified. We need to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a state where we are purified. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran, He mentioned why he dis, why did He send Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa yuzakkihim wa yu'allimuhum al-kitab wal-hikmah yusabbihu lillahi ma fi samawati wa ma fi al-ardi al-malik al-kuddus al-aziz al-hakim 
هو الذي بعث في الأميين رسولا منهم يطلو عليهم آياته ويزكيهم ويعلمهم الكتاب والحكمة. The objective, the purpose of this deen, the purpose that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala have sent صلى الله عليه وسلم, the purpose that the legacy of صلى الله عليه وسلم, the علم have continued down from Sahabas to Tabi'een and up till now. That is the inheritance that we have got. The ulama carry. The purpose of this ilm, the purpose of this Quran is first to invite people towards Allah, to connect them with the Creator, Almighty Allah, Rabbul Alameen. And then وَيُزَكِّهِمْ to purify them through this Quran, to purify each and every one of us, purify ourselves through this Quran. And وَيُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابُ الْحِكْمَةِ to teach them the kitab, the Quran, and the hikmah, the wisdom, the hadith of sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the way of life, that how it is the noble way of life. What do Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala expect from us as a human being when he created us as the most honorable creation? وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا بَنِي آدَمْ وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا بَنِي آدَمْ وَحَمَلْنَاهُمْ فِي الْبَرِّ وَالْبَحْرِ وَرَزَقْنَاهُمْ مِنَ الطَّيِّبَاتِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honored us. And he has honored us and he is giving us sustenance, which is tayyibat, which is very pure, which is very clean, which is pure and clean. And he is the one who is lifting us around. He is the one who is making us possible that we can travel on the earth, in, we can travel on the air, we can travel on the sea. He made it possible for human beings. My respected brothers, when it comes to month of Ramadan, it is always connected with the Quran. That is the reason Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he describes about month of Ramadan, he says, Shahru Ramadan, Alladhi unzila fihi al-Qur'an hudan nas He says, the month of Ramadan, where he revealed the Quran. Where he descended the Quran. He sent the Quran down. As a guidance to entire humanity. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala introduced us the night of Laylatul Qadr, and He says that we have revealed the Quran in the night of power, in night of decree, Laylatul Qadr. Again, Laylatul Qadr is connected with the Quran. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna anzalnahu fi laylatin mubaraka. We have revealed, we have revealed the Quran in the blessed month, the blessed night, the blessed night, the night is mubaraka. Why ulama karam explains, mufassir explain, why it is mubaraka? Because it is multiplied in many folds, many folds. Alhamdulillah, summa alhamdulillah, we have reached those last nights. One of these nights going to be the night of Laylatul Qadr, definitely. Taharraw Laylatul Qadr. Fi ashri al-awakhir, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, look for the night of Laylatul Qadr in the last ten nights of month of Ramadan. If you happen to be a little lazy, if you happen to be, you know, a little busy, last week, don't miss out the last week. Alhamdulillah, we have reached the last week now. So the Quran will always connect us with Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and will remind us the purpose of our existence. Purpose of our existence. Quran will actually teach us and govern us how we should lead our life. And when it comes to many conditions in our life, many challenges that we face, Quran guides us. When it was asked, Aisha radiallahu anha, when it was asked by Aisha radiallahu anha, how was the life of Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Akhlaq and khulq, the characteristic of Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Aisha radiallahu anha replied and said that khulquhu al Quran. Quran is the character of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If you want to know Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, read the Quran. When it comes to recitation of the Quran, tilawat al Quran is the ibadah. Tahfil memorizing the Quran is the ibadah. Tadris learning the Quran is the ibadah. Tadabbur and tafakkur. Thinking and pondering about the Quran is a ibadah. My respected brothers, we need to engage, we need to draw closer to Quran and people of Quran, Ahl Quran. This is something very, very important because what happens, whatever rust, whatever dirt, whatever the bad character and bad thought that we possess in our heart, it can be purified through Quran. The more we read Quran, the more we listen to Quran, the more we learn and more we get closer to the Quran, my respected brothers, our hearts get purified. Tazkiyatun nafs becomes there. 
and my respected brothers, when it comes to Quran, there is two type of Quran. One that the Quran that we read while we are not in Salah. While we are not in Salah. The second category of Quran, that is Quran that we read in Salah. Because we are there connecting, communicating with Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have secluded ourselves and we are in isolation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Salah. When it comes to month of Ramadan, you can see the connection between Quran and Salah. Quran and Salah, and actually we suppress our nafs and desire through fasting. Through fasting, we, we are very mindful about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's commandment. And through fasting, we are suppressing our nafs and our soul is being fed. Our soul is being fed with Quran. Our soul is being fed by recitation and listening to the Quran, learning the Quran. And our soul is being fed by adhkar and connecting to Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you exclude yourself, if you, you know, come to a, you know, isolation with Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that we know our beloved Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the last in night, he will suspend in itikaf. Itikaf means that you isolate yourself with Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You exclude yourself completely away and you distance yourself away from all worldly affairs which used to give you, you know, enjoyment and happiness. Now you're going to find enjoyment and happiness by connecting yourself with Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why you see when it comes to month of Ramadan, it is mentioned about standing in the night. Even in the night of Laylatul Qadr, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned, Man qama Laylatul Qadr imanan wa ihtisaban ghafira lahu ma taqaddam min zambi. Those who stand in the night of Laylatul Qadr with iman, with firm conviction, with firm conviction and ihtisab expecting reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ghafira lahu ma taqaddam min zambi. Allah will forgive and purify him from all his past sins. And in fact, he will replace with good deeds. He will replace with reward. My respected brothers, an entire month of Ramadan, man qama Ramadan, iman and wahtisab, and those who stand in Ramadan with iman and ihtisab. So standing in the night, it's a special ibadah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam introduced that to us. He introduced that to us. He said that you stand. This used to be the normal life of Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam right through Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Wazkurisma Rabbik wa tabatal ilayhi tabatila. He used to be in tabatil. Tabatil means completely, you know, shutting everything else and completely devoting only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The night, one third of the night of Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, every day, right through the year, it was devoted to Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is expecting from us from us at least in this month of Ramadan expecting from us at least in this month of Ramadan where we devote ourselves in the night and especially the last 10 nights we need to plan it and I think in Australia it is the winter so you have a long night so you can divide it beautifully sleep for a few hours and you wake up do some, recite some Quran, stand in the night, and in dua and tawbah, istighfar, Allahu Akbar, you can devote yourself, you can connect with Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My respected brothers, at this is the time, the entire world is in need of mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Entire world, the entire superpower in the world, the whole superpower, the science, everything has failed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has proved that Everything is happening with his amr, with his permission, with his qadr. Nothing, ma yantiq, nothing happens here without the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we can only turn towards him. By only turning towards him, get him back to him, my respected brothers and elders in Islam and sisters, that we can get, you know, salvation. We can get back to him and we can be successful. My dear respected brothers, and if you go through, if you go through the ahadith and if you read through the Quran, what do we find here? First, when you're connecting the Quran, when we connect our Quran, do we get really connected? Can we feel about it? Can we really feel about it? Can we really feel? Can we see that Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking to us? Do we feel that? Can we hear that? We need to get into that. We need to get closer. 
what how can we do it only we can it can it can possibly done if we spiritually purify ourselves purify ourselves get closer to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and read and learn and understand and it was a beautiful uh, uh, you know a 3d module was shown about a masjid a beautiful masjid why do we need the centers of masjid why do we those are the place which we connect ourselves spiritually to almighty allah subhanahu wa ta'ala those are the areas where angels come where we need to connect ourselves we cannot disconnect ourselves from masjid we cannot disconnect ourselves from with our fellow human brothers muslim especially with muslims with the brothers and sisters who are in faith we are together without connecting with them without connecting masjid it is impossible to connect with almighty allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we need to divide our time we need to connect collectively with all you know through our true connection through our congregation ibadah to almighty allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as well as we need to connect ourselves in isolation devoting ourselves in time of tahajjud to almighty allah subhanahu wa ta'ala my respected brothers where rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he went to masjid when he when you migrated to medina what is the first thing he did even before he entered the medina the place of quba established baytullah a place where people can gather to worship allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and soon as sallallahu alayhi wa sallam entered medina al munawwara what he did do he established masjid al nabawi and sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he made his house his room right next to the masjid al nabawi which is closer why he wanted to be connected and closer to masjid close to the masjid so these type of thing when it comes to connecting our ourselves with the masjid there are so many hadith so many hadith if you want to get the shade of arsh of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there is seven category of people who is been given the glad tidings they will definitely get the shade of arsh of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala amongst them a person who is heart is connected with the masjid رجل قلبه معلق بالمساجد which is connected with the masjid at this moment we all are really weeping and we are crying and we are really emotionally we are attached to the masjid we are really missing in month of ramadan we are missing those congregational activity my dear respected brothers and sisters in islam we can understand how important is a center a place a masjid we are believers can get together we are believers can gather and worship together we miss that congregational salah five times salah we miss those congregational taraweeh congregational qiyam we miss those together we stand in qunut we raise our hands and all of us together in dua of jamaa together we say amin allahumma amin my respected brothers definitely insha allah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to give each and every one us of opportunity soon to get back to our normal life to get back to our masajid to get back to our madaris to get back to school our normal life insha allah allah subhanahu wa taala will remove this calamity this pandemic and epidemic away soon as possible insha allah may allah let us all raise our hands to almighty allah subhanahu wa taala my dear respected brothers our we can only purify i am saying that we if we want to meet allah subhanahu wa taala we were born in a in a in a condition we are we were purified sinless we were really pure when we born along the way when we reach our adulthood what happened due to this worldly affairs due to the worldly affair there are so many baggage baggage and so many dirt has attached attached to us so many things has attached to us when it's all those together when we go back to almighty allah subhanahu wa taala again Remember when you're trying to go back to Almighty Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala meeting Almighty Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala we need to meet him in a purified condition Rasul so, sallallahu alaihi wasallam said hadith farhatan lis saimi farhatan farhatun inda al iftar wa farhatun inda liqa'i rabbi the one who fasts he has two moment of joy two moments of happiness one is in this world in the time of iftar He is so happy. He is joyful. Why? He was able to fulfill the commandments of Almighty Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala from dawn to sunset. He suppresses nafs, so he is really happy. And then you can see the niyam of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. The food is presented there, so he is thanking Almighty Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. That is the moment of joy. And the second 
moment of happiness and joy is that when he meet almighty allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through fasting through actually we suppressing our nerves and connecting ourselves with the quran and connecting and and standing in prayer in salah what do we do through that we purify ourselves so are we are ready to meet almighty allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we cannot meet almighty allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a condition when we are filled with dirt when we are filled with sin we cannot do that so only way we can purify our sin we can purify ourselves through quran salah and sadaqa i'm coming back to the charity my respected brothers the one the reflection how pure is your heart the reflection of your pure your pureness of your heart is that will reflect in your character in it will reflect in your charity if it reflect in your interaction with your brothers it will reflect in your mindset when you look at your brother what do you think do you have a good thought about him do you pray for him do you make dua for him do you help him do you wish good for him that is a reflection of your pureness in your heart that is the pure it is reflected that's why sallallahu alaihi wasallam said a believer to another believer is like a mirror al mu'min al mu'min is like a mirror it's a mirror when you stand in front of a mirror what do you see you see yourself so when you look at your brother if you can see goodness in him you if you can see righteousness in him if you can you know have good thought about him that means your heart is pure my dear respected brothers your reflection of your heart reflection of your soul heart means here my dear respected brothers in our body the purification of our body comes remember through halal consumption and through wudu and we need to purify ourselves halal consumption our body gets purified and haram goes away and through wudu and through ghusl and through a'mal ibadah our all our whole body will get purified that's why sallallahu alaihi wasallam said in day of qiyama how would i recognize my umma sallallahu alaihi wasallam said he will recognize sallallahu alaihi wasallam will recognize us based on our wudu ghurran muhajjalin min athar al wudu all those places that all those limbs that we use for wudu will be glowing in day of qiyama and sallallahu alaihi wasallam will recognize these are the my umma these are my umma because all of us will stand in front of almighty allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saffan saffa how we stand for salah same way the angels are nadha ni'ma sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned the one of the greatest blessings for this umma sallallahu alaihi wasallam said it is that how does the angel stand in salah in in queue saff and saff they are in straight line they stand in line after other and when you stay in same way my umma stands for salah when we stand for salah in saf in congregation our first saf and then second those who come those who hasten towards the masjid my respect for brothers angels also standing with us and they are also saying amen with us my respect for brothers and elders in islam we have reached the last ten nights we have engaged so much in quran alhamdulillah we engage in salah in qiyam we stood all those nights in qiyam tarawih and all that and my respected brothers now it's a time that we whatever our hearts have been purified through quran our hearts and our soul has been purified through salah now it's a time to reflect that in our charity you see when it comes to remember our fast will not be completed unless we pay sadaqatul fitr zakatul fitr is not been paid that means our fast is not completed it will not be accepted by almighty allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so what does mean allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have connect the fast with charity with sadaqa allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have connect that with salah always whenever he mention about salah he mention about zakat he mention about zakat it is a reflection that it is a belief it is a reflection of our faith because nothing belongs to us the wealth that we possess it doesn't belong to us almighty allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he keep reminding us in the quran anfiqu mimma razaqnakum min qabl anfiqu mimma razaqnakum min qabl spend from the wealth that i have provided you spend that from the wealth that i have provided you nothing belongs to us 
fama bikum min ni'matin fa min Allah whatever bounty that we are enjoying whatever we possess it is from Allah from Allah so when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking us when Allah have requested us to spend in good cause when he has requested us to spend in good cause then we must remember that that wealth is given to us by him when we ask we need to give it back rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned about a hadith what happened in the time of bani israel there were three people i'm just cutting it short they were affected with different type of calamity and disease one person was he was a, a leper who was having the disease of leprosy another person was bald he didn't have hair and other person was blind an angel came in a human being's form and the angel came and spoke to them what do you want and then he said you know i want the person who has the you know the leprosy said i want to be cured and have beautiful skin and then he asked okay he made dua almighty allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cured him and granted him beautiful you know uh, skin and then he asked what else you want then he was saying that i want a she camel a camel so that i will be able to make my living with that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted him a pregnant she camel and then the next person who is bold when the angel went he said what do you want he said i want good hair and then angel you know he rubbed his head and he had this you know angelic uh, you know a transplant of hair immediately took place with the commands of almighty allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then he asked what do you want he said i need some you know cow so that i can make my living allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted him the blind person he said i am blind i need my eyesight he was blind he said i need my eyesight and then with the dua of that angel allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted him eye eyesight and he said what do you want for your living he said i need some sheep and goats he, allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted him many years later the same angel this allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is testing when someone is coming to you and tapping your door in any organization is coming and asking you you need to remember that there is not the organization i am not giving this to that so and so the individual i am giving this to almighty allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there's a narration aisha radiyallahu anha used to spend lots of wealth lots of money in charity and whatever used to give she used to give in charity she used to put good fragrance on it and give and her servants used to ask why are you putting good fragrance said no this wealth is being given to almighty allah so i need to put good fragrance and give it and rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam has been very generous in month of ramadan aisha radhi said i have never seen him being so generous generally sallallahu alaihi wasallam is generous but in month of ramadan he has been extra generous he is just to spend a lot of wealth remember these nights if you spend 1 Remember, if that happens to be the night of Laylatul Qadr, it coincides with that. That means you have spent for thousand months one dollar. You have spent for thousand months more than eighty-three years, and even that, the reward is multiplied into ten to seven hundred times. And Allah knows, you know, how many times and how many folds that He is going to multiply. My respected brothers, when it comes to charity and sadaka, remember, many of us things I pay my zakah. so rest is not my business zaka the money of zaka it does not belong to you the two and a half percent from your savings from your wealth when you pay zaka that does not belong to you it belongs to the people it belongs to those eight category if you don't pay if you keep the zaka the dirt is not removed that i said my topic here is that purifying our soul and our wealth through sal quran sala and charity if you want to purify the wealth the ni'ma the bounty that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you need to spend you need to give it out you need to give it out in good cause almighty allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in surah baqarah spend from the wealth that i have given you anfiqu mimma razaqnakum min qabl before the death come before the day of qiyamah come the day of qiyamah you cannot do any transaction there yawmul la bay'un fihi wa la khulla there is no friendship there is no friendship in the time of death when you are going you are witnessing the angel of death is coming if you say that i am giving all my i am giving my entire wealth for this mosque this masjid no it will not be accepted only one fifth will be accepted because now you can witness now you can see that so my respected brothers this is the time that allah has given you 
whatever he has given it is not the amount it is not the amount how you put it is not it that's the habit that you have how much do you intend how much do you intend do you wish to give this year my dear bro brothers and sisters islam many people have intention to go for hajj and this year most probably 99 percent hajj will not take place hajj will not take place even if it's taking place, it will only take place within the country where in Saudi, little number of people with social distancing, with physical distancing, they might perform Hajj. But remember, people will not won't be able to travel. There are many people in UK, in USA and around even in Sri Lanka. They donated, they donated the money what they have kept for Hajj for people who are in need, for places we are in need. My respect for brothers, when it comes to our charity, Zakah, it has to go in eight category. There is one part, fi sabilillah. There's difference of opinion in scholars. Can we take that part for this type of masjid activity, community activities, difference of opinion? Some scholars say yes, some scholars say no. So to be safe side, it is better that we give entire zakat, not for this type of infrastructure. There's two type of thing happens through sadaqah and charity. What happened? One is that you develop individual in community. That is the human development. When you come to human resource development, that is the zakah you use it. And sadaka and lillah has been used to develop the infrastructure. Without infrastructure, you cannot develop human being. You can have a very good person, but you need to have the infrastructure. You need to have the school, the university. You need to have the hospital. All those infrastructure is need to us to you know beautify our life and develop our life and become better people so likewise how school is important you know city is important to have a hospital is important and having a masjid is much more important because masjid is a place where you purify your heart it is a hospital to rectify our heart when you are, when we are sick when we have spiritual disease the place that we need to go back to masjid we need to go connect ourselves spiritually in masjid and we have to connect ourselves spiritually with almighty allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so my respected brothers and this is the time let us all come out with generosity and this comes under the category of sadaqatul jariyah sadaqatul jariyah each and every one of us can promise right through pledge and they say every month i will donate so much because this is sadaqatul jariyah Remember, the one is that continuously people are benefiting continuously. And this is a very best form of Sadaqatul Jari. If you build a masjid, Allah is going to build a palace. If, you, if you, you are unable to build a masjid alone, you have contributed to us. It's definitely for your contribution, he is going to build a palace there. I just want to mention a story. It took place in, you know, it happened amongst the when the tabi'in was there after the sahaba there was one tabi'in he was rectifying the roof of the masjid there was a repair roof of the masjid when there was rain the water used to flow down so he's repairing the roof while he's repairing the roof one of his tools fell down and then there was a brother just passing by i want you to listen very carefully attentively just passing by and then he requested can you give me that tool the brother just gave it to him. And that night, this Tabi'in is having a dream. In his dream, he could see a big, huge palace. And then next to that, a small palace. And he asked the angels, to whom does this palace belong to? He said, the big palace belongs to you. For what? What did I do? In exchange of what? I think, when the Masjid of Allah, when Baytullah, Allah's roof was damaged. You repaired it, rectified. For that, Allah has given you this palace. Then he asked, what about the small palace next to that? He said, while you're repairing, there was a brother just passing by. He just assisted you by giving the tool to you. Just by helping you to rectify, to repair the roof. Allahu Akbar, walillahi alhamd. He will be given that small palace. My respected brothers, because the masjid, as long as our intention of building the masjid is not boasting, not dividing the ummah, as long as our intention of building masjid is uniting the ummah, not to show off, we want to have a better masjid than that. 
as long as the people who are involved in this project, they are united. They are not dividing themselves in a group, calling this masjid belongs to this jama'ah. This masjid belongs to this group. This is a Tawheed masjid. This is the Tablig masjid. This is the Sufi masjid. This is a Sunni, you know, this is a Baralwi masjid. No, masjid, it is for everyone who wish to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who used to make sujood. What, you know, what I like about this program and this project and this committee, what I've heard around when the brothers invited me, I supposed to be with you all physically invited me. I did a background checking. Whoever I knew, I asked about this project. One, you know, there are many good feedback I got. One of them I want to highlight. And this is I'm really I'm really attracted to this type of project because we go right around the world. There are masajid. It is a barrel we masjid. Oh, even in Sri Lanka, the masjids are divided. Unfortunately, Tawheed Masjid, Sufi Masjid, and it is divided. No, my respected brothers, you cannot call The Masjid belongs to Allah. Do not call anyone other than Allah. We are not establishing a Masjid to, you know, to improve our ideology and to say our ideology is superior. No, we are establishing a Masjid to glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to unite the Muslim, to unite the believers. Unite the believers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran this two type of masjid. One masjid is the foundation is taqwa where there are people who gather there to purify themselves. And then another masjid where they build the masjid dirara wa kufra wa tafriqan to divide the believers. Alhamdulillah, summa alhamdulillah. The brothers who are, you know, who are involved in this, they are from all different background, different ideology, Maiman, Mele, and those who are from Tablighi ideology and Sufi ideology and whatever you call it. You know, I don't like to call these things. Unfortunately, last few decades, we have actually gone away. Our intra differences have really expanded and, you know, it has gone away. Now, we, this is the time we come together here, my dear respected brother. So this center, this community center is going to be a center for believers. This center is going to be for all those who wish to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whatever ideology you have, it is for you between you and Almighty Allah. So all those brothers are in this, co in this committee. So I emphasize this is a time. If this happens to be the night of Laylatul Qadr or the nights to come, one of those nights. So divide the charity. This is Sadaqatul Jariyah. There are sadat, sadat charity that you have to give. You have to give it to the poor, fuqara and masakin fee. You need to divide your wealth into three things. I don't want to go detail. There was a hadith regarding this dividing your wealth. One portion is for your family's consumption. One portion you invested back. You need to be smart. You need to do good business. You need to earn so that you can spend in good cause. And then other portion, one third, you spend it on your family. One third, you reinvest. And one third, you spend on charity. And when it comes to charity, you divide that into three. One portion you give in Sadaqatul Jariyah, this type of cause. We are there continuously benefited when it comes to building masjid, the schools, you know, the well, the hospital, you can go on. And then other type to feed people, to feed people. People are hungry, feeding people. It's very important. Other portion is to educate people, educate them, make them self-sufficient where they become, you know, they can earn their own a living. So these are the three different type how you spend, you divide your charity. If you're going to give, you know, if you're going to give $30, make sure you give $10 to the cause where the masjids and schools and these type of projects, Sadaqatul Jaria. Then one portion you feed people, feed those who are really in need and other portion you give it to people where they can educate themselves and develop skills and they can become independent. So my respected brothers, this is a time when you spend whoever is going to spend every day. An angel is going to say, oh Allah, the one who spend, you give them, you multiply their reward. Open it up. The one who holds on, you know, who's going to be miser, who's going to have that greediness. Actually, Allah is testing if our heart is pure, then there is not going to be no arrogance, no greediness in our heart. No miserly feeling. We are not going to be stingy. We're going to spend in path of Allah. This is a cause. This is opportunity. I think right round, many people, everyone can donate. Everyone can donate. This is the opportunity that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given. And remember, uh, brothers, it's not that through our wealth, 
this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's project. If we be part of it, we will be blessed. Our wealth will be purified. Our soul will be purified. Allah will bless us and our family. And if we don't you make use of this opportunity, Allah will use some other people and definitely this project will go on. So you need to decide whether you're going to make use of this opportunity. Make use on these nine, these last 10 nights of Ramadan. Make use of this and divide your wealth and spend in path of Allah. Sin in, this, in the cause of Allah. For pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, my respected brothers, until we spend the wealth that we love, we will not reach the righteousness. Again, once again, my respected brothers and elders in Islam, I just want to remind you, this is opportunity. We do not know whether we will get this opportunity once again. Whether we will get this opportunity once again. Now, they are coming and tapping your doors. They are actually coming and tapping your doors. Please, open your doors. Open your hearts and arms and just generously contribute, inshallah. Next few months, this project has to complete, inshallah. Few months time, it has to complete. And inshallah, with all the wind and lockdown is lifted, inshallah, we must be able to gather and stand together in that masjid and say Allahu Akbar and call upon him in ruku and sujood. My respected brothers and elders in Islam, so I'd like to thank the committee members who put, you know, put this together and made all this effort and made, you know, gave everyone the opportunity right from the world, all those brothers and sisters, the opportunity to contribute towards this cause. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of you and let us also be part of it. Angels are marking, you know, angels are recording our names. Those who pledge today, angels are recording their names. Inshallah, front of your name, there shouldn't be a zero. There should be something, at least one dollar, one penny, at least one dollar, whatever you could, you should do. You know, Hafiz Azam mentioned, a sister donated the ring. My respected brothers, there are so many stories. Time doesn't permit how our ladies, our sisters have been so generous towards the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of the oldest madrasa, one of the oldest madrasas in Makkah is known as Sawlatiya. I'm just mentioning Sawlatiya is the name of a lady. She is from India. Actually, she donated so much of wealth and that land to build the madrasa there. So that madrasa is the, one of the oldest madrasa is known as Madrasa as Sawlatiya. This community center is a madrasa. This is a masjid. This is a multi-purpose community center which is centered with the masjid and all other act activities will take place so make use of this opportunity don't miss it my respected brothers next year ramadan this project will be completed so you will not get the opportunity to spend for this specific masjid maybe somewhere else in the world but definitely this is the habit that we need to build in ourselves where when allah has given you whatever wealth whatever portion it's not the amount you give it is how much you are able to give it to Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how generous you are. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all of us. Definitely, our topic today is that purifying our soul and wealth through Quran, Salah and Sadaqah. This is what we have been doing this entire month of Ramadan and what we're going to harvest and those characteristics that we have built and the habits and good deeds that we have built, you know, our deeds and habits that we have built in this month of Ramadan, it must be able to nourish us the rest of the entire year may almighty allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all of us may allah grant us rahma maghfirah itqum min an and may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us tawfiq to reach the night of night of laylatul qadr wa akhir da'wana an alhamdulillah rabbil alamin wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh jazakallah khairan wa ahsanu khairan jazak um, Sheikh, Sheikh Nur Amin, for your beautiful words of wisdom and encouragement, alhamdulillah. Um, as the Sheikh mentioned, this time of Ramadan, and he mentioned it a couple of times because it's so important. We're in the last 10 days of Ramadan. These are times where our du'as are answered. Allah is waiting for us to ask du'a. Who is going to ask du'a? And I will answer. Alhamdulillah, it's a great opportunity that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given, given to us. And, um, you know, we are in a very crucial time at the project of Asla at the moment where, you know, once we're able to get past this stage, then we're just on the final final bit of the project so that we can finish off and we can open up this project, inshallah, to, to the public. Um, and so now I would like to introduce uh, Sheikh Adwud Hashim, inshallah.
He is a um, graduate from uh, Jamia and Alimia, alhamdulillah. He's you know, part of many projects uh, here in Melbourne, alhamdulillah. He's a great asset to our community here. Without further ado, I'd like to uh, invite Sheikh um, Ajwad, alhamdulillah. He's also part of the East Islamic College of Melbourne. Um, he's a senior teacher there, alhamdulillah. And he'll be um, giving us um, a bit of encouragement as well. And some words of wisdom, inshallah. Jazakallah khairan. Barakallah feekum. Alhamdulillah. As-salatu wa salam ala rasulillah. Respected brothers and sisters. Um, first of all, I would like to thank and congratulate our beloved Sheikh um, Arkham. Uh, he gave a very clear and strong message tonight. And uh, how to how we can make the maximum use of the rest of the month of Ramadan and the importance of this, uh, this project. Um, I like, I really like the dua Sheikh uh, made at the end. He said, uh, uh, this masjid should be able to be operating by the by next Ramadan, inshallah, by the will of Allah. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in this great night, this masjid, as Sheikh wished, should be open opera in, in, in operation next year. At the same time, our Melbourne community, inshallah, may Allah help us to welcome our beloved Sheikh and for him to give a very um, such an impressive and strong message and and nasiha to our community in the same masjid inshallah very soon barakallah um brothers and sisters uh, our sheikh he clearly explained the uh, significance of this month so i don't want to go deeper into that we are in the best month of the year and also we are in the one of the best nights uh, last 10 nights of the month of ramadan so we are kind of in, so two goodness come together. Um, also, um, almost two thirds of Ramadan has passed by, only less than 10 days left. So we are not guaranteed that we are going to achieve another month of Ramadan. That is not in our hand. Allah should help us to achieve another month of Ramadan, but not is not in our hand. But one thing is in our hand is that this month is in our hand. So by the will of Allah, we can make some effort. We can strive to make the most out of this month of Ramadan. Now, um, so um, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us to make the maximum out of that. Otherwise, um, we will be the loser. And we don't want that to happen. May Allah protect us from that kind of situation. Brothers and sisters, I'm going to point out um, uh, something very important from the history of Islam. We know our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He made his historic journey from Mecca to Medina um, at the age of his uh, at the age of fifty three, and um, it took about ten to twelve days to reach uh, Medina. Those days it was called Yathrib, and after Prophet's arrival, they changed um, the city's name into Medina al Munawwara, the city of light. So when Prophet arrived in Medina together with, um, uh, you know, there were many other Muhajir already waiting and also the Ansar were waiting. So first Rasulullah landed in a place called Kuba and he stayed there for about four days. Among the many important things that he وسلم, carried out in Kuba, the most outstanding task was building the masjid. We know even those who go to Masjid, uh, go, go to Hajj and Umrah, they visit this Masjid called Masjid Kuba. So after four days, Rasulullah left Kuba to go to Medina. And then one of the major three first tasks Rasulullah engaged was the first one was the make building the Masjid. So in another word, within the matter of 12 to 14 days, the Prophet built two masajid in, in, in Medina. Even before he was thinking about where he was going to stay, where he was going to um, find his uh, place of residence, where his other uh, companions going to stay, no. Because that's the going to decide the future of this ummah. Now we can connect this to our situation. We are migrants in this country. Alhamdulillah, we are living in a safe country, in a great nation. We are all migrants in this country. So we came for a number of purpose, but ultimately our purpose must be to satisfy Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we need to follow the same sunnah of the Prophet So building the center 
for the community, for the spiritual and religious benefit of the, this generation and the generations to come. So that's the big challenge in front of us, uh, in front of us. So we are, Alhamdulillah, we are uh, the Asla, uh, you know, engaged, took this challenge by this, most importantly, by the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, and they achieved re remarkable uh, things that we cannot be even imagined within the la last few years. With zero, you know, it started with zero. We are a very small community, and uh, but Alhamdulillah, we achieve great things. The masjid has been started, uh, the, the, the organization registered in 2013, ASLA, Australian Sri Lankan Association Incorporated. And then um, and they, soon we started the masjid project. Now, this small group is started, Alhamdulillah, as brothers, sometimes our brothers, they're crying, they see the you know, amazing uh, Allah's Rahmah, Allah's Barakah coming. So, it's come to almost 60% of the project is being completed. Now, in the 40% has to go. So the committee, the brothers, with the, with, the, with the great help of our local brothers and sisters, and also people around um, uh, Melbourne and other cities, um, they managed to collect over $1.5 million and spent that so far. Now, we need just around $1 million to complete the rest of the 40% of the work. So, however, that is the last stage we are in. Even if we can target within the next month, within the next uh, the, this Ramadan and then following Shawwal, if we can achieve at least 200,000 of that, Alhamdulillah, we might be able to reach one of the important milestones. So that's our target, inshallah, tonight. I don't want to uh, uh, reiterate what uh, Sheikh mentioned about the significant and the benefit and the great reward waiting from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, for people who are building the masajid. One of the po popular hadiths we know, man bana lillahi masjidin bana allahu lahu baytan fil jannah, whoever builds the masjid, um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, uh, will build a, master, a palace for him in paradise. Now, when we look into this hadith, we might um, wonder how can I, as, I am, uh, as an individual, afford to build a masjid? That's why when you see another hadith, another beautiful hadith giving another description and the explanation for this hadith, we are Rasulullah said, whoever built a masjid, even the size of a nest of a little bird, makfas, and that person will get the reward of the masjid, building of the masjid. So subhanAllah, so that shows it's a collective effort. It's not one individual to, to accumulate all the reward. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us the opportunity to accumulate our wealth and our energy and our our effort so that we all gain the same reward by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Dear brothers and sisters, um, I think Sheikh mentioned one of the beautiful um, Quranic ayah. Uh, now, we need to uh, very, uh, we need to look into this verse you know, very precisely. Allah did not say from your wealth. Mimma razaknakum is spent from the wealth that we I have we have given to you. So the wealth we have in our hand, we didn't come to in this world with carrying all these things in, in with us. We came with nothing. We don't have even the cloth. That's the same way we are going to leave this world. We are not going to take anything. So Muslim a Muslim must always be a smart person. He might be wise. How he can be wise? He need to take whatever he earned with him. If he can do that, he is the smart moment. So that's what we have to do. You know, um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, says in the Quran, Al-Malu wal banuna zinatul hayat al dunya. Um, you know, your, your wealth and your children, they are the beauties of this world. Of course, no doubt, it's, it's, it's very clear. From morning to night, what we are doing, we are earning, going, going, earning, earning, trying everything, making phone calls, doing all these things because we want to, we want to accumulate wealth, money, because that's the beauty of this world. Allah says that. And secondly, well, Banun, our children, we are working hard for why? For we want to give them a very prosperous life, beautiful future. So these are the beauties of this world. Allah says they are the adornment of this world. And Allah, in another place, Allah says. Um, 
Yahabulima Yesha Zukur, Yahabulima Yesha Inasa. So Allah says, the, he, he described the children as Allah's um, gift. So this the value, our children and our money, our wealth, they are a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are valuable uh, adornment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But at the same time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Innama amwalukum wa awladukum fitna. Your children and your wealth, they are test. They are trial. So you are Allah testing us with giving us. It's not our lucky. Some people say, oh, I'm very lucky because I got this job. I'm very lucky. I this is not lucky. No matter how many million, you may, you may be a millionaire or billionaire. Doesn't matter. You're not lucky. Allah testing you by giving. So even one dollar, if we earn, that's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala going to question about that. So this is the big challenge in, 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 um, uh, for us. So may Allah help us by you know, using our wealth and our our skills and abilities in such a in such a way to help the, the course of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in this country, our this you know this um masjid is not for this community or um, or this generation. This is for the generation to come. Now this masjid is located in a place called uh, Raven Hall, which is about 30 kilometers from the city, uh, Melbourne city center. Now this surrounding is there are many localities. This is one of the fastest growing localities in 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 in, in Melbourne, uh, even in the Victoria. Um, uh, according to the council report, um, this is the third fastest rapidly growing council area in whole Victoria. So and people are coming because especially you know the uh, people of of Bali Muslims uh, they want they always want to live in a, in, a, in a community environment because that's what Islam is all about. So rapidly increasing now it is estimated over eight thousand Muslims uh, eight thousand over eight thousand Muslim families are living in this area in this um, uh, in this Shire area. So there are many many uh, several Muslim sub uh, several suburbs with many Muslim families including Raven Hall. Uh, Burnside, Caroline Spring, Taylor's Hill, um, uh, and, and many surrounding suburbs. So all these suburbs, they don't have enough massage to cater for the religious and spiritual needs of the growing community and also most importantly for the next generation. If we don't do this one for the next generation, we are failing some of one of the most important obligation in our, in, in, in our hand that is entrusted upon us. So this is um, uh, this is uh, this must be one of our priorities, same as our personal priorities. Every one of us have personal uh, objectives, personal aims to achieve. So let's make this one as a personal objective uh, achieve. So, brothers and sisters, I don't want to go too long into this one. So please open this um, uh, um, your heart and mind. And tonight, whoever listened to this presentation. Please don't leave without getting Allah's blessing. This could be one of the nights, one of the last 10 nights. Allah knows, who knows? This can be that blessed night of Laylatul Qadr. Because some scholars say it, could be, it can be one of the uh, one of the 10 nights. Uh, one of Some scholars say based on the hadith, it could be one of the odd number nights. So it's in the hands of Allah. But it's one thing is for sure, when you work hard with proper, with good intention, with sincere intention, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will definitely will give a reward for that because Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said Innama la amalu bin niyan. actions are based actions are based upon your intention so it's your intention and you make your uh, your, your intention and you and and, and you um, and, and then you open that and you know one of the fascinating hadiths I always remember when Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said um, um, it's a beautiful had ma naqasa malun min sadaqa what a beautiful message from the prophet what is what does what does he want to say you know we always we have some money we always thinking about our you know the bills our mortgage or our uh, school fees and 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 um, so many things you know other, other other things other responsibilities so what should i do with I, if i spend this money if i give this money for this project if i give this money in this charity oh i'm going to lose that now we have to understand this is the guarantee from the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ma naqasa malun min sadaqatin. The charity will never ever diminish your wealth. Charity will never diminish your wealth. So something we fear, something we are worrying, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's prophet, Allah's messenger giving us some promise. 
So assurance, what else do we need? So subhanAllah, Allah subhanAllah, think about everyone, everyone, you and I, when you think about our past, 10 years before, 15 years before, 20 years before, 30 years before. Have you imagined, have you dreamed that you are going to achieve something in this life, in whatever you have achieved in our life? Is it, is it, is it from, from ourselves? Everything from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is testing us by giving. Sheikh mentioned about the story of three people, leper and the blind and the bold. Now, this, this shows very, very clearly. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give people, Allah test people by giving them. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala test, testing people by taking them from them. Now, poor people, alhamdulillah, they are actually people don't have, you know, and they are to some extent, they, they, you know, they, they, you know, they can succeed their, uh, in, in their test. But subhanallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when you Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give the facilities, with the opportunities, it is, that's a blessing. That's the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I don't want to take too long, my dear brothers and sisters. We had heard enough. So let's... Um, Tonight, anyone who listened to this project, um, this page, should not go without making even a single dollar, even $10, even $15, $50, $100. Make at least a donation because we know our Prophet said, when you do a good deed anytime, that can be, the reward can go up to 10 times. But think about the month of Ramadan. That goes up to 70 times. Even if you spend $1, so 700 times, 700 times. So that can go based on your intention and sincerity up to $700 worth reward. So let's make this great opportunity for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, 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 and open our hearts and mind and our pocket and, and be generous from what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala given to us and to, to, to spend for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa akhir dawna alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. بارك الله فيكم جزاكم الله خير السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Memorized it better, alhamdulillah. And also mentioned to us the, you know, the different avenues, alhamdulillah, that we're able to um, gain rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, alhamdulillah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward Sheikh Nuramit, Sheikh Ajwa, um, and also all the brothers who have actually contributed in some way, shape, or form towards this project. Um, you know, they have imparted us with some great words of wisdom. So alhamdulillah, you know, we can take the take-home message, alhamdulillah, that we have taken from this you know, program today is that, you know, the, the month of Ramadan is upon us. It's we have to dig deep and we have to donate generously so that we are able to build our palaces uh, in Jannah, insha'Allah. Jazakallah khairan to our viewers, generous donors, um, all the brothers who helped in making this possible. The, IT, the, the, the brothers from the IT team, alhamdulillah, went through a lot of effort, a lot of testing to make this a reality. The families of the Asla community who have worked tirelessly over the years since its inception to make this project possible, alhamdulillah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make this dream a reality. And I would like to make a request from everybody to remember this project in the du'as in these last 10 days, inshallah. Especially in these last 10 days and nights, remember it in your du'as so that Allah makes it a reality. Jazakallah khairan. I would like to pass on to Sheikh Nur Amit now, inshallah, for the final, for the final du'a, inshallah. Jazakallah khairan. Assalamu alaikum. Jazakumullah. Uh, before I start the dua, I would like to congratulate the entire team and all those audience who are there. So even though, you know, whatever we have put up now, Alhamdulillah, Allah will definitely Allah will reward all of us for our intentions, especially our pure intention, what we have. And definitely, inshallah, uh, with the help of Almighty Allah, this dream will come true inshallah this will become a reality soon inshallah we all will be able to inshallah stand together in that masjid inshallah and even that as how we were united here even in day of qiyamah we will be able to stay together in jannah and then talk about all the projects that we did here and then you know you know congratulate one another Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Hamda yuwa fi na'mahu yuka fi mazidah wa fa'anna ya kareem ya rahim ya Allah اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد اللهم ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا واغفر لنا يا مولانا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم 
اللهم ربنا اغفر لنا ولوالدينا ولمشايخنا ولاساتذنا ولمن لو حق علينا ولمن اوصانا بالدعاء ولجميع المؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات برحمتك يا ارحم الراحمين اللهم انك عفو تحب العفو فاعف عنا اللهم انك عفو تحب العفو فاعف عنا اللهم انك عفو تحب العفو فاعف عنا اللهم وان لك في كل ليله من ليالي شهر رمضان عتقاء وتلقاء وامناء وخلصاء وجعلنا يا ربنا من عتقائك وتلقائك وامنائك وخلصائك من النار والعفو عند الحساب برحمتك يا ارحم الراحمين والله بليز فورغيف اس يا الله والله يو اول نو اور كونديشن اور انتنشن يا الله the purpose that we have gathered here in a virtual platform ya allah you know the condition ya allah you know the need that we have ya allah ya allah we are raising our hands and the empty handed ya allah you are the ghani ya allah wa nahnu alfuqara ya allah wallah purify our hearts wallah purify us ya allah purify us ya allah through your kalam to ya allah purify us through your kalam ya allah purify us through salah ya allah O oh Allah give us the generous heart ya Allah may we spend we spend every single thing that you are given to us in your cause ya Allah to please you ya Allah ya Allah make us live only for sake of you ya Allah whatever we do ya Allah let us make those things only to please you ya Allah our family life our commercial activities and everything just to please you ya Allah Ya Allah, our objective should be, Ya Allah, just pleasing you, Ya Allah, not showing off anything, Ya Allah. Nothing belongs to us, Ya Allah. All the ni'ma belongs to you, Ya Allah. All this wealth belongs to you, Ya Allah. O oh Allah, grant us that heart, Ya Allah, where we will generously contribute whenever there is a need towards the community, Ya Allah. Whenever there is a need, whenever there is a need for your deen, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, how the Ansar open their doors, Ya Allah. How the Muhajirun spend, Ya Allah. How Abdurrahman ibn Awf and Uthman ibn Affan on all those general sahabas, Ya Allah, spend. O oh Allah, grant us a halal wealth, Ya Allah. Likewise, Ya Allah, grant us the ability to spend whenever there is a need ya allah ya allah unite us ya allah ya allah remove all the calamity and disease ya allah from this world ya allah unite our hearts ya allah ya allah grant us night of the laylatul qadr ya allah ya allah grant us many more ramadan ya allah many more ramadan ya allah ya allah unite us ya allah in this world in your masjid ya allah in your baitullah ya allah unite us ya allah in jannatul firdaus also ya allah ya allah A lot of brothers who are done here, Ya Allah, made a lot of effort to put this virtual platform together. We have to convey your message, Ya Allah. Give to every single one the opportunity where they can spend their wealth, what you have given to them, Ya Allah, and gain your pleasure, Ya Allah, and to build their palace, Ya Allah, those who made this possible, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, accept them, their family members, and purify them, Ya Allah. Grant them the goodness of this world and akhirah, Ya Allah. O oh Allah, grant us, and, uh, grant us and our entire progeny, Ya Allah. goodness of this world and akhira ya allah whatever sallallahu alaihi wasallam and your pious predecessors have asked ya allah goodness grant us also ya allah and wa allah whatever sallallahu alaihi wasallam and your pious predecessors has seek refuge from ya allah protect us and our entire progeny from that ya allah rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina adhab an-nar salli ala an-nabiy al-ummi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in والحمد لله رب العالمين